Scenes are an infinite canvas for you to place images, drawing, fog, and more. Scenes are the base building block that you'll share with your players, so let's go over some examples of what you might use a scene for. Most commonly, you'll have one scene for every encounter you create. So if you've created the perfect tavern map for your players, then you can create a scene which just has that one map and all your NPCs. If you then decide to add a second floor to the tavern, then you can simply add a second map to the same scene. If you want to have a second encounter somewhere else in town, then it's often best to create a new scene for that encounter. Also, a scene doesn't have to have a map in it, so if you're a GM who just likes to draw your encounters as you go, then you can create an empty scene and use the drawing tools to map out your dungeon. Scenes aren't limited to encounters as well. As we'll see later in this video, they're also great for tracking things like overland travel. Okay. So to create a scene, all we have to do is click this plus button here. Now we can choose whether we want to create an empty scene, a scene from an existing map we have, or a scene from a new map we're uploading. If you want to draw your map, then you can create an empty scene. If you already have a map in your library and would like to use that, then you can select existing map. For this tutorial, we're going to be using a new map, but instead of clicking this button here, we're just going to go to our file explorer and simply drag and drop our maps into this window. Here I have my maps saved on my computer, but you can also drag and drop from other websites as well. As we drop our maps into this window, we'll be met with the scene importer. The scene importer allows us to verify and adjust all the settings for our scene before we import it. If you want to make use of our grid snapping and ruler features, then it's important to check that your map is aligned with the Albert Rodeo grid. In this example, our map had its grid dimensions in the file name. Because of this, Albert Rodeo will read this number and automatically set up everything to match. We can see the current grid dimensions with the 49 by 28 message here in the bottom left. If we want to change these grid dimensions, we can click on the dimensions here and adjust them to whatever we need. A lot of the maps you'll create using map making software will either include this in the setup process or the exported image. Also, if you find maps from creators on Patreon or social media, most of the time they'll include the grid dimensions when they post their maps. Okay, all we need to do now is click the import button. Most of the time, this is all you'll need to do. As most maps you'll find on the internet, or create yourself will follow this pattern. There are some notable exceptions to this, so let's go over them now. In this example, we have a trickier map. This is an encampment map by Mike Schley. You'll often find these kinds of maps when you buy official D&D adventures. What makes these maps trickier to align is the fact that their grids don't go all the way to the edge of the image. Fear not though, because Albert Rodeo makes this easy with our grid alignment tool. But before we get into that, I'm just going to change the grid color to make it super easy to see what I'm doing. To do that, I can go here into the bottom right, and I'll just click this bright orange color. I'll also change the opacity of the grid to full, and I'll change our line type to solid instead of dashed. So now if I close out of this and zoom in, we'll see that our grid doesn't align very well with the underlying map. The first thing we need to do to align our map is to go to the top left here, and we'll make sure the corner of our ruler here aligns with the corner of one of our grid cells. To do this, we can either drag on the vertical stem here or on the horizontal one. I'm just gonna pick this grid cell to align to. So if I zoom in here, I can move this up and then I can move this across. And with that, I think our offset is aligned. The next thing we need to do is to make sure our scale is correct. To do this, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna use these resize handles here to get a rough estimate of what our scale probably is. Okay, that's not looking too bad in our little four x four grid here, but if we move over to the right hand side, you'll see that we've accumulated some drift. To fix this drift, Albert Rodeo has these precision rails here. And now that we're at the end of the image, all we need to do is move this out until everything is looking perfect, even on the corners of this image. So with that, we've now aligned what could have been a tricky map in just a few steps. Okay, let's change our grid back to how we want it. Maybe white, we'll drop the opacity a bit. 
and we'll change back to this dashed line. And now all we need to do is hit import again. The last map we want to import is a large overland hex map. In general, hex maps can be hard to align because a hexagon doesn't fit nicely in the fixed pixel amount we use in a digital image. To demonstrate this, let's first change back to our bright orange color here. So I'll just click the orange, let's make the opacity higher, and then let's change to a solid grid line. And to make sure our grid is a hexagon, we'll also choose the hexagon shape here. Let's also as well change our grid size instead of five feet. Let's change it to five miles to match what the map is. This won't affect any of our alignment, but it will make our rulers use the right dimensions when we are actually using the scene. Okay, to align this map, we'll use the exact same process as before. Let's just zoom in and we can grab the ruler and we're gonna try and find another solid edge here. Let's say this hexagon here. So here I can zoom in, I can move around. Let's match that edge, match this top edge. Here we go, we're looking good. And the same process as before, I'm going to zoom out. Now try and match the scale. We're looking good in this close proximity, but let's see if we've accumulated any drift. Okay, not too bad, but there is a little bit. So let's just fix that using the precision rails here. Great, in a square grid map would be done here, but if we zoom out now and go towards the bottom of this image, You'll notice that we have a lot of drift on the vertical axis, whereas we didn't have any on the horizontal. This is because the underlying map we're using actually has drift in the hexagon pattern it uses. To compensate for this, we'll need to scale our map in the vertical dimension only. To do this, we can move over here and grab our rail. But this time, as we drag on the rail, we'll also hold the shift key as we're dragging. This will tell Albert Rodeo that we only want to scale in this one dimension. Okay, that's looking good in the vertical dimension. So now if we zoom out and head back to the horizontal, we'll see that we haven't affected our drift at all here. And now we should have a perfect alignment even in the top left as we do in the bottom right down here. Okay, let's change the grid color back to how we like it. Maybe a dark, there we go. And now we can just hit import. Okay, now that we have three scenes that we can open and set up however we like, the last thing I wanna go over is how you edit a scene once it has been created. All we need to do is open the scene by double clicking it. And now we'll see the map and grid that we created. If you want to adjust the grid settings, you can open this menu in the bottom right here, and you will have access to all the same options you had in the scene importer. If we want to adjust how the map is aligned, we just need to select the map. To do this, you can just double click on the map right here. The reason you need to double click is because the map is locked, so you don't accidentally select it when you're moving around. If we want to get access to our grid controls, then we can just select the edit button here in the menu. This will pop open our controls here, which we can zoom in. And these are the same controls you have access to in the scene importer. So you can change grid offset here by dragging the rulers or scale by dragging the handles here. I'm just gonna control Z, undo that. If you want access to the manual controls menu, you can hit this button here right above the ruler. To test that our alignment is perfect, we can just drag some characters into the map here. Here we go. That's looking good in the top left here. And what about in the bottom right? Our alignment's still looking great. We could also test it by adding some rulers here. So let's see how large this distance is. 25 miles, that looks good. Maybe some larger distances here in the overland. Great. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna look at how images work in Albert Rodeo. This includes importing custom character tokens, as well as exploring all the different types of images available.